Hey everyone, it's Matt from Practice Labs. I'm going to give you a brief walkthrough and introduction to the Practice Labs platform using one of our most popular titles, CompTIA A+220-1002. You may have accessed the Practice Labs platform by clicking a link in your education provider or organization's website, via a learning management system or LMS, or perhaps you logged in directly using your username and password. The first thing you'll see when you land on the Practice Labs homepage will be your list of available Practice Lab titles on the left. This may include some of our major vendors such as Cisco, CompTIA, Microsoft or VMware. The list of titles you see may differ from what I'm showing here. If we now take a look at the options that are available to us across the top, the next one will be the Exercise tab, where the content for the module will be displayed once we've selected our lab title. The next tab will be Exam Prep, which you may or may not see depending on if you have any Exam Prep titles assigned to your account. Next is the Additional Features tab, where you can view your Exam Prep and Lab Reports. Then it's the Settings and Customization tab, where you can view and configure settings for your Practice Lab environment. And lastly is the Help and Support tab, where you can view useful documentation, user guides, support videos, and get details on how to contact our support team. Now let's jump into this CompTIA A Plus Core 2 lab title. When you click through into the lab, you'll see a brief introduction and a list of available modules. When you select Module 1, Operating System Types and Features, you'll be presented with a list of exercises contained within this module. Why don't we click on the Start button to dive into this lab? This takes us to the Exercise tab that I mentioned earlier, where we can see the content you'll be working through to complete the module. To move through the exercises, use the Next and Previous buttons located at the bottom left of the content panel. Before you get into the exercises, you'll be presented with the lab topology diagram that shows you what you'll have access to during the lab. As it says in the content, you may or may not use all of the devices. We can then continue through the exercises using the lab devices we have at our disposal to carry out the tasks requested. Once finished, use the Done button to mark the module as complete. Whilst waiting for PLAB DC01 to power on, we can see there are a couple of switches on each of the other devices. Power on and refresh. I'm now going to go ahead and power on the Linux CentOS device to give you an idea of a multiple device lab with different operating systems. Located at the bottom of the lab toolbar is the lab session timer, as well as three other buttons. Power on all devices, reset all devices, and log out. Now that the domain controller device has powered on, there are a few new switches that have appeared. Power off, reboot, reset, and suspend. At the top of the lab toolbar are two buttons, toggle content and fit device to window. We can now look at the devices themselves in more detail and explore the features they offer. Starting with the device toolbar, we have the option to toggle auto login, switch to console mode, reconnect to the device, show some information or hide the device from view. These options may differ though, depending on the device and lab type you're using. Inside of the device is a menu that provides access to a virtual keyboard, which is especially useful for touchscreen devices, an information panel that provides details of your connection, the ability to send a control alt delete command, which is helpful when trying to unlock a device, and we can enable a right click within the lab when using devices without this functionality, such as mobile phones or tablets. And that brings us to the end of this quick overview. Thanks for watching, 